Welcome to the Ink Paul Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Crystal. But you probably know that because you're probably a repeat listener. And if you're not, welcome. Uh, uh, today, I got the Wrecking Crew back together. This is something that we've been, that's naturally repeated itself and will definitely continue to do so. It's Jim Mafood, who's kind of like my co-host on here. Tommy Lee Edwards, Troy Nixie, and myself, and we keep uh, picking an artist to ink. And this is something very near and dear to me and all and the rest of the Wrecking Crew um, inking, the art of comic book inking. And this is something that uh, is a topic of conversation. Uh, what is inking? And uh, I think I, I recently tried to define that on the 11 o'clock comics podcast. And they were asking me about it because it goes back to that that Chasing Amy movie uh, where um, was it Jason Lee was, was an inker? A comic book inker and the joke was, you're, so you trace and blah, blah, blah. You don't trace. That's not what inking is. It's not tracing. Um, so let's go back in time a little bit. Uh, in the earlier days of like Mar- like Marvel and, and DC and assembly line comic books, you had the penciler who would draw shit. Now, their job was primarily storytelling, composition, but not refined drawing. So a lot of the times the pencils were very loose and sketchy. They were like what was called layout in the design world. And they needed an artist to come in and clean up. Like that's an animation term. An animation term, you have the rough, the animator who does the rough animation, then the cleanup artist who cleans it up, picks out the final lines, makes sure the lines are all pretty and all that. So it's kind of similar in comic book inking where The inker traditionally was a cleanup artist, uh, someone who who had to have the uh, ability and knowledge of drawing. And sometimes were great draftsmen in and of themselves, but their mark making was, was was the key. And so you would take these rough pencil sketches and you'd need to convert them to solid black ink lines because of the the limitations of the printing press back then. Um, You needed solid black line art and then a color separator to add colors. So inking was very much about solid black and white line art. Now technology these days... Sorry, I'm just tired. I'm just fucking tired all the time, but I got a vacation next week. More on that later. Yeah, technology has made things very different now, where you don't need inking at all. Uh, You can reproduce pencil lines just fine. It's not not an issue. Uh, And and then with Photoshop, I mean, your color separator is just built in. I'm getting too technical here. Um, So I think what happened was around the late 80s when the artists became like the stars of the show you saw more of a a lean in from the pencilers to working much tighter, assuring that their drawings were as close to what they penciled, or making sure the, not giving the inker a lot of room to interpret the pencils. So while it became more and more like leaning towards tracing, it was still about a refined mark making. And inking is, is, is a 
beautiful and, and wonderful art form. So I grew up looking at comics this way. Uh, and the artists that I, I really... Ooh, sorry, god damn. Have more coffee, boy. Um, the artists I grew up, like, like Frank Miller, like the artists I really admired, I noticed they were inking themselves. And I wanted to understand all aspects of comic creation. And so I started to really study inking. And when I say study, I mean just looking through books and trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. There's no courses. There was no, no teachings. Um, there was no internet to go on YouTube and find this shit out. And I remember hearing once they used a brush. I think this was maybe in a wizard magazine. So I got a brush. Didn't even know what kind of brush. Just picked out one I thought I could draw with. Um, and that started me on this journey. And, and very early on, I learned I had a, a natural aptitude towards inking because my drawings had always been very, very line-based. And that comes from an influence of graffiti art, animation, and the comic books I loved. And so inking became natural to me. And then, I, then the more I studied it, I... I discovered like some European and South American inkers and I saw some inkers who were more expressionistic, more impressionistic. I saw some inkers who were worked really wet and some inkers who worked really dry. So a wet look is where you're working on a smooth surface paper and you're using a very thin ink. So every mark you put down is laying down a lot of ink onto the paper that's not absorbing it too quickly. Whereas a dry look is a very thick ink with a, with a very textured paper. So that brush line you're making breaks up because the texture of the paper, the absorbency uh, of the paper, and the thickness of the ink are all kind of like working together to not make a solid black line. So it, it opened up the world to me and the more I studied and when I went to get my master's degree and had classes and, and started to talk to professional artists I admired, um, I, I learned more and more about inking as an art form in and of itself and how I wanted my pencils, how I wanted my art to look in the end product, what you saw on the page. And that was dependent on me inking. So I decided I would always ink myself because the marks made in my ink are unmistakably mine. Just like a great inker, like Jonathan Glapion, the marks he makes are, they're his, or Dexter Vines. Those are Dexter's marks. There's no mistaking them. So, um, I, I, wanted, I wanted that control because I'm an egomaniac. What can I say? No, uh, ink, I, I became known for my inks. It, it, was, it was a part of my style that was uniquely mine, and I became known for it, and, and I loved that. And so what happened is inking was a necessary tool, like I said, for the printing process, a necessary stage in, in, in creation for the printing process. And technology kind of eliminated that. You had some people... Who all just like artists who all really leaned into inking themselves. And then you had great inkers and great pencilers who there was still a need in that area. I think what happened is it eliminated the middle class of inkers. The, or not eliminated, but is eliminating um, that middle class of inker. The, 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 the trade, the craftsmen, the tradesmen. I mean, not, not the great, not the groundbreakers, not the visionaries. But, but the, the, the tradesmen, I guess, is the best word. They were inkers by trade, but they were not... They were bringing nothing unique and new to the table. They didn't have much vision. They were skilled at the art of inking to a degree. They got the job done, but not much beyond that. So I think that breed of inker is fading out. So what you have left now is... A lot of di people just working digitally and drawing in a black line. That's not inking. Um, just because it's in black doesn't make it ink, an ink line now. Inking is a very specialized art form. Understanding what line is, understanding what mark making is, understanding how to take a pure black mark 
and a collection of pure black marks and creating the illusion of a gray and a whole world of values from pure white to pure black and everything in between with nothing but a solid black and a solid white tool. That's the art of inking and it's fucking incredible. And I loved it. I, I, did, I love it. So, um, which brings me to Ink Pulp Instruction, which is coming very, very, very soon. October 1, check me out on social media, at Ink Pulp, at I-N-K-P-U-L-P. And I'm going to be, uh, like, announcing that and all that. But the first video is, I mean, the first, like, probably 10 to 20 videos will be focused on inking and, and the techniques of all these great inkers uh, in the comic book industry, um, two of which are on the show today. I got videos with them I'm shooting in the next month. Anyways. So, um, yeah, that's the part of the reason I started Ink Pulp Instruction was to document this, uh, this art form that is becoming rarefied and document the techniques of the great artists who have been doing it for a while and are continuing to do it. And I think what's happening with inking now is, just like when, when the camera came out, they are like, there's the end of painting because now we have a camera. Well, what happened was painting became more specialized. So the craft of painting elevated. The creative fertile ground of painting exploded open and you got rid of that like, tradesman painter that that did the job but didn't really bring much more to the table than getting the job done so and I, like just like when when printing technology came around and uh you no longer needed like the the um, the man run printing press and then printmaking became a very specialized art form that you'd go to galleries to see these beautiful artists who use printmaking as an art form. So I think of inking that way and this this attempt, or not this attempt, we are doing this. The ink pulp instruction is going to have documentation of these great artists and their techniques to pass down. So the people who are inking now, there might be less people inking, but the artists who are inking now, and especially those who are inking themselves, I think are read are, are discovering completely new techniques and tools and styles of mark making that had never been done before. Uh, I think it's creatively just the most fertile I've known inking to be. So I'm very excited about that. So it's been nice to have these podcasts where we pick a penciler or an artist we really love and take a stab at inking them. It teaches us individually as we're doing it. It teaches us uh, as a group, as we're listening to each other, and I think it's teaching all of you out there as you watch. So I found these Wrecking Crew episodes to be invaluable and really, really awesome. So today we're inking Kevin Nolan, and Kevin Nolan, if I go back to what I was saying earlier when I was in school, was one of the most influential artists upon me as an inker and as a draftsman. And... Um, one of the most influential if not the most influential and I've gotten to know Kevin a little bit over the years I'm just a huge fan of his so taking a stab at inking him today was was a real treat uh, and that goes for all of us and we talk about that um, so we got a really cool episode today when the wrecking crew is back we are inking um, I wanted to take some time to talk about the art of inking and the importance of preserving it, and also just plant those seeds in your head. Ink Pulp Instruction is coming in from the time you're watching this, within a week, a week and a half, it's going to be out. It's going to be out. Uh, it's going to be out on Indiegogo. So it's going to be like Indiegogo.com slash Ink Pulp Instruction. I got that name on there. So keep your eye out. Uh, it's... it's totally affordable and this is just the first of a whole library of videos we're going to build and it's not just inking i'm just going to focus on inking in the beginning because i think people are really 
there's a whole school of artists developing now who really want to get into inking and um, it's a really sacred and special art form very dear to me very true to me so I wanted to focus on that I think you all will enjoy it no I know you all will enjoy it after that we're gonna get into everything figure drawing coloring storytelling page layout script writing ink pulp instructions taking over the fucking world so get ready and enjoy today's episode of the Ink Pulp Podcast. Peace. Welcome back to the Ink Pulp Podcast. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, what are you doing? <laughs> Getting ready. Oh, Dr. Getting Paul. ready. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, a welcome oh, back, hi. everyone. I, I'm back with, uh, we're calling ourselves the Wrecking Crew now, and we ink other people while talking a bunch of shit. Um, but Tommy's not going to be inking with us today because he's he's like the rock star of the bunch, the uh, the lead singer, uh, the the prima donna, the precious one. He is he's in he's in demand and has deadlines to meet. Is that all right, Tommy? Am I correct yeah. in all that? What what oh, band? What kind of band would Tommy be the lead singer for? He's like David Lee Roth. He's he's like <laughs> sp wearing spandex, doing high kicks. <laughs> like he's he working on muscle cars. He's Tommy. He's Tommy Lee Roth. <laughs> Tommy Lee Roth. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Tommy Lee Roth, <laughs> Tommy Lee Roth in the house with his oh. with his. Let's let. I mean, just look at the chair. The chair says it all. He has his personal Tony Stark chair. I love it. Tommy Lee Roth. That's mm -hmm. it right there. Tommy, yeah. next time we see you at a con, you better be wearing spandex, dude. <laughs> with a zebra pattern on him. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Tommy's got work to do, but he's gonna be. Yeah, hanging I've got work to do, and and I just yeah, Melissa's not feeling great, and I've been some running errands and real life stuff, and and then and I crushed the crap out of my out of three of my fingers yesterday, Doing working well. on the Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. <laughs> not the money hand, though. I hope. No, it's the other one, but which I didn't think I would use that much until I start working on the computer and all. Oh uh, yeah. Hands. So yeah, my this nail is about to come off. Oh. Oh, I dude. smashed it, and then I took my I had rubber gloves on, and I took the glove off, and there was just blood pulled all up inside the glove. Oh, oh. I, don't like, I don't like hand injuries, man. Any kind yeah. of hand injury, yeah, it was gross. Uh, and then I noticed all the blood was coming from under this fingernail. Oh, so, awful! Yeah, it's like cracked in half and. So it's gross. Wah. No, I'm kidding. That's awful. Uh, I hope you heal up soon. And yeah, and it's really, it hurts an extra amount when I have to uh, talk. <laughs> right, 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 right. So uh, we'll hear Tommy complaining for an hour or two. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I lost a lot of blood this morning. <laughs> Are you feeling a little lightheaded? All right, so today we're gonna ink th this one. This one's on me. Uh, I threw this out there. One of my favorite artists of all time uh, and the master of inking himself, Kevin Nolan, uh, which you can already see. Jim has buried the lead on that one. He's got a Hulk going. So, Jim, t talk to us about your choice here. I mean, it's just big, badass Hulk. What more do you want? Lots of shadow, lots of, I got, I got a brush pen. I'm gonna do some like- Oh, we're going with the brush keep today. Work on this guy and do keep it, keep it loose and, uh, and weird. But Kevin Nolan is, is an, uh, I love his work. I love his ink, especially over Mignola. I've met him a couple of times, damn good guy. Really nice guy, Kansas City, Missouri guy. Yeah. Um, can't say uh, more good things about him. Agreed. He is one of the nicest people in comics, no doubt. And Troy, what do you got going? This is where I do the really low, low, low brow camera move. Um, well, I guess I could hold it up. Dead man. There's a really cool dead man that he drew. I Found that on, that. I think it was on his Twitter. That is so cool. Yeah. 
Did you guys see Nick Klein did like a little watercolor dead man this past week? Oh no, I didn't see oh, that. Oh man, it's one of the it's a gorgeous dead man. I loved his take on it. I uh, that. Up on that. Uh all right, so let me show you guys what I'm doing. Switch over to my table. Boom. I got this Doctor Strange I'm gonna do. And uh let me switch my microphone and we can all get oh, wow. busy. Cool. Yeah, the, I I um I normally on this new project I'm doing as long as I can maintain three pages a week I'm good. But it's but it's you know I've already my pencils are super loose so I have to do a lot of the heavy lifting in the final drawing and then I have to then color every page. So I've been trying to like I basically lost a week by when I just decided to hurry up and finish the Grendel Kentucky series. So now on the new thing, I'm I'm like three pages behind and I just can't seem to catch up. So I'm trying to get as much done as I can before tomorrow. Are you guys ever feel like you're on schedule? Except for Jim. Fuck you, Jim. Do you ever feel like <laughs> you're actually on schedule when you're working on a deadline project? Because I don't. No. <laughs> it's like I'm constantly lying to myself. Yeah. Well, I guess with the la I guess with Trout, which was my uh, last comic project, um, I worked it out so that I was that the that the deadline was way 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 down the road. So, but even then, I was still I was still working fourteen hour days the last two weeks. No, three weeks straight. I didn't take a day off to get it done. So yeah, it was. I guess it was pretty bananas. So. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's the life, man. That's a hard life being a comic book artist for like just the hours and shit. And since I'm determined to take Saturdays to smash my hand, <laughs> um, I, uh, so like Sunday is it, I was supposed to be, you know, do like this kind of stuff and do stuff around the house and you know like real life stuff, but but uh, but yeah, I'm having to try and finish more pages by tomorrow. Sucks. But yeah, it seems like every weekend I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be good, and then no. yeah, it's like we're constantly lying to ourselves. Yeah, right. So Tommy, uh, was your decision to work digitally on this project uh, yeah. as a result of you being able to work quicker digitally, or no? It's a, a look that I wanted. Oh, okay. It's a it's so there's a certain approach I wanted to do that's similar to more like. Like, well, it's a little more like some of my production, like movie stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a uh, like a lot of my animation stuff. Um, but it's all it's basically like a painted book more than pencils, inks, and colors. Oh, uh, okay. But it's digital. There's no way I could do analog paint for a whole series. And it kind of like I did a Blade Runner cover a ways back that kind of captured the. The vibe I sort of wanted with this, and and uh, that, that was cover was good. Cool. So yeah, I'm trying to kind of go, you know, all digital with it, and I'm still getting used to the 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 new Cintiq and stuff. When did you get a new Cintiq? Like a year ago. Oh, you're still getting used to it? Yeah. Well, there's these controls. On like a little remote. Oh, oh yeah. look at that! I, I need to yeah. get some teeth soon. And it's all programmable, you know, into um, right. you know, I can program it to different keystrokes. Right. But it's got a little like a jog shuttle dial on it where I can um, change my you know brush sizes, zoom in and out, you know that oh, kind of wow. stuff. Where the a lot of the other Cintiqs would have like a that stuff on the actual tablet or on a little like slider on the tablet this is a got a little magnetic thing on there so it actually just sticks to the, the tablet that's cool so i can kind of put it wherever almost nice. yeah um, tommy lee roth with his fancy toys but <laughs> i'm uh but after you know 15 years or whatever of, of using your left hand on the keyboard. Um, 
I right. know all that stuff. It's kind of like, you know, when you go to the grocery store and see those dudes like bringing you up and they don't look at the keys. Yeah. 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 Like that's how I feel when I'm, you know, coloring with my left hand, I'm kind of doing all the keystrokes and everything. And now I'm trying to figure out, can I replace that with these, with this? And this is what I'm struggling with. Nice. All righty. So what happens when you get old, Tommy? You just, you know, you get set in your ways. Exactly. That's how I really hurt my finger, actually, was this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suing Wacom. <laughs> There's so many jokes there. So many jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've got some things I definitely want to talk about today, but I think we should start with... Uh, after the last episode we recorded, uh, we were talking post recording, and uh, Troy, you brought up some some interesting points of discussion that I, I thought would be good to talk about today. Do you remember that? I don't. What was I talking about? You're I talking say a lot of I, I say a lot of shit. So <laughs> it was it was about um, I'm trying to remember exactly myself. It was either about style when it came to drawing your your comics or time oh 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 when i was talking about working to your ceiling yeah is that, is that what it, yeah, oh okay yeah. i thought we had actually talked about that on camera so did we, yeah. we didn't guys right we didn't talk about that on camera no that's what prompted me getting this together so fast oh, okay <laughs> well yeah i was sort of talking about um you know how you push your ceiling you know because we all have our ceiling you know and that our ceiling being where we are you know where we're at our best at the moment and you know you raise your ceiling by pushing through it if that makes sense and you know, you're you talking work, about like your skill set your like, skill set right, yeah right and but with comics it's really difficult to do because you know you talk about deadlines and just the sheer amount of work that goes into putting a comic that you're rarely working to your ceiling and so there's growth within, you know, you know, so if your ceiling is here, you know, in comics, you know, maybe you're working this close to your ceiling. And so, you know, as you do more, obviously you get better, but you know, you're incrementally still not working to your ceiling. So what do you do? Like, do you, do you sort of accept that? I, I guess the trade off is, do you have fewer projects of, you really knocking your socks off on something or do you have more projects where you're not quite showing showcasing your abilities because of the restraints of deadlines and that kind of thing if that makes sense yeah it does um and this is something i i've wrestled with a lot and thought about a lot i feel like i mean there's some artists like jim who just your whole technique and and just the way you work is built for um, speed, right? And uh, efficiency. But but you're being true to who you are as an artist when you do it. You're not like mm -hmm. I don't feel like you're like force. I think like you slowing down is not who you are as an artist. I don't think right. you work better. Would you agree with that? Yes, totally. Okay, but then I feel like there's other artists who like they they're presented with so presented with with the options because uh after working freelance for as long as i did and was never f rarely fully happy with the work when it was over i didn't feel like it most of the time represented what i was capable of um i i didn't want to develop a a shorthand or a short a series of shortcuts that would allow me to be faster because i didn't whenever i tried that i felt like the work suffered and i know there are some artists that are just fast and then there are other artists who make that sacrifice um to just be faster and i look at their work and i'm like that's not what i want to do i don't want to have more work out there that i'm not happy with so for me it was about taking fewer jobs taking jobs that offer more time and ultimately just getting away from 
freelance, I think. Well, freelance is, yeah, it's just notorious for really not being able to work to the best of your abilities because of time. You just can't. Um, except for, like you mentioned, those, that, th those few who, who, who are just really fast and, and can. Right. And so, right. for instance, like with, with me, with, with tackling these commissions like I've been doing this past year, um, I've been able to sort of really push myself in another area and, and seeing, you know, how that affects my comic work um, so I'm able to sort of learn on a different job, if that makes sense, and yeah. then bring some of that sensibility to comics, even though I haven't had a lot of time to do comics lately. But um, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting. And I think I'm, I'm in the same boat as, as you, Sean. It's like I would, probably, I would prefer to have fewer projects that really represent me as an artist than more projects where I'm like, oh, I, I could have really... If I, you know, slowed down a bit, I could have really nailed that one. Right, right. Yeah, like I, I did, like I saw my, I remember asking myself these very questions and I remember saying, I don't want to be a sitcom director. That's not who I am as a creator. I'd rather make like films I'm proud of. So that was the mentality for me. And it is, and I'm not saying either one is, is the correct answer. It's just, right, it's right. Just, yeah, it's just, you know, I thought it was an interesting conversation because it's something that I've been thinking about a lot of late where it's funny because I've been at this for nearly 30 years now, which is just crazy to think. Wow. Uh, but it's just now where I really feel like I'm able to sort of tackle the type of material that I want to tackle and feel somewhat successful coming out the other end of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, you know, the time I've been taking on the commissions and the work I've been doing lately feels so much better producing it and looking at it. Like, not just the finished product, but the act of creating it, too. Well, and I think, too, that, that comics is sort of starting to change. And I think that we all saw the effects of, you know, when COVID hit and publishers stopped, sort of shut everything down when Diamond shut everything down. And then you started to <laughs> really see the reality of, of a system that is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And artists are sort of shifting you know, and, 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 and sort of directly marketing their fans and selling directly to their fans and, you know, and they're taking longer on projects and really being true to who they are creatively in terms of the type of work they want to do. And, and um, yeah, it's been, it's sort of been interesting um, as a result to see what's going on. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think there's going to be some really interesting stuff creatively coming out in the coming years. Oh, and for I'm sure. Definitely not going to be at any of the big publishers. Well, and I was talking about that with, and I don't certainly don't want to disparage publishers, but with, with some friends and, and speaking about like with what's happening at DC and they're really scaling back and we were talking about, because I did that Dark Knight Returns page recreation, and and um, so I was talking to someone. It's like, well, who's who's doing this type of work at the at the big two publishers? Like, who is Frank Miller in 2020 doing this type of work at Marvel or DC? No one. No one. There's no. You know, one. I, but I think yeah. it gets back to. And I thought about this too. Uh, I feel like you know. Back when Miller and Alan Moore and um, creators like that were at Marvel and DC doing these landmark projects, I think the companies were much more open to artists 
bringing their voice and vision to their characters. Yeah. But nowadays with the movies and the franchising and, and all the successful merchandising, it's the companies now want complete control. Yeah. And so you're not going to get that like interesting artist take on things when you well, do that. Absolutely. And I think it's also a combination of um, those really talented creators can raise at other places and and yeah so you have a combination of really strict um editorial and other options <laughs> yes yes exactly jim you're very quiet oh i'm concentrating on this face because there's so much <laughs> All right. detail in it uh but no i mean you, you guys are like right on the money it's just it's stuff that uh i mean jim you kind of like have have really embraced the fully independent mindset for a long time now yeah i mean it, it's not even um it's more of a style based decision where for me it's like well i just want to do what i do and uh wherever whatever avenue i can put that in whether it's like working for a video game company or doing design work for animation or feature or doing my own comics. It's just my style is the, is the thing I'm selling and is the brand and is the thing that I want people to recognize. So for me, it's, it's not like um, a goal of trying to do my, a Batman story or book right. for DC or something. It's more like, no, I just want to like put my stuff out into the world and, have people respond and react to that. You know, it, it isn't character based or um, anything like that. It's more of where do I fit it in and where, where can I get away with doing what I do? Yeah. yeah. And I think like, I'm guessing that comes from a, a certainty like in your artistic voice and, and the level of confidence in, and uh, I guess certainty, I guess, is the right word in, in what you do and just being honest to that. I don't think I had till more recently. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting because, and that's why, I mean, you know, we all love Jim's work. And one thing I really respect about you, Jim, is that you really leaned in to what you do really early on. And I think a lot of people, um, struggle to do that and I, I mean I certainly have and I have all this crazy shit that I've written that I just it's just sort of sitting there in files and I'm like I just need to start drawing this stuff like why right. am I why am I trying to convince a portion of an a potential audience um, you know that are never going to be interested in what I do so why try to scale back to to win their their favor or win their eyes you know win their 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 money out of their wallets to buy my books when they're never going to so right. just completely lean into the type of stuff that i want to do and just be 100 percent honest with with myself yeah yeah well that's the thing is i just want to see you Troy do what you do and what you want to do and that's your best work you know and that goes for everybody here it's like I just want to see everyone unleash doing what they really want to do yeah it, it takes so long to do this stuff that like why engage or become involved in a project that you're not feeling you know you shouldn't we all need to get paid and make a living, but like hopefully the paycheck isn't your number one motivating factor for agreeing to uh, get engaged with a project. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think. You know, I can hear you, right? <laughs> hey, but you're doing your thing. You're doing the I Tommy am. thing. Actually, actually doing my. Actually, that kind of goes to um, how. Uh, Troy's question about my choice of, of medium on this thing and when I decided to do it uh, you know to paint it digitally and instead of how Grendel I just did all traditional ink on 
forward and you know is like this this story takes you know like I got more into it once I decided to approach it a different way right so I was more excited about it more like all right cool yeah and then I got you know then I knew I really wanted to do it and could do it but you've always been you anyway too like you yeah yeah that's for damn sure Never thought, like, looking at any of your work, Tommy, that it's like, oh, boy, he wasn't really being honest with who he is here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I think getting back to what Jim said and, and tying Tommy into this, um, uh, for me, like, you're right. You don't want it to be about financial decisions. I fell into the trap of, you know, trying to support the family and all that through doing this and it's not the only way it just I didn't I don't know if it was a a lack of belief in myself or a lack of knowing that I could just go out and build something I I don't know what it it was probably a combination of all that but it it just made it harder to see that I could do this I guess because I was so worried about making sure we had the money we needed yeah but that's you being a responsible Husband and father. Yeah, but I think there's a way maybe to do that while being responsible and and still like taking some risks. I mean, you're right, Tommy. Yes, but there's also a lot of fear in that thinking, and, and I'm trying to get away from fear-based decision making. Well, I think the chat- guy, I know a lot of people who haven't gotten their shit together, and their families are really suffering because they feel like. You know, they won't make that compromise. Right, right. So, yeah, definitely a line to, to walk. You know? Right, and I and I wouldn't be that. Like, I definitely, you know, I, I, I know I did what I had to do, and I did keep food on the table. But in the same vein, I didn't really, like, grow financially or, like, right. anything from making those decisions. I just remained right. steady. You're still and, doing everybody else's stuff. Right, right. And, yeah, I... I I know exactly how you feel. All right. Tommy Lee Roth can relate to me. <laughs> As he does a high kick, he jumps right. out of his chair. Yeah. Does a high kick and then whips out a sword. <laughs> a sword. <laughs> Dude, David Lee Roth is, is an experienced and trained uh, swordsman. He He's lived in Japan, I think, for the last... Wait, are you... Five, five or six years? I'm not joking. This is a I real thing. I know this about him. And he, he's like fully immersed in Japanese culture and, and is like a sword master, I think. Oh my that God. That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, man. he has an interesting, I mean, he, he comes from wealth anyway, even if he wasn't. Does he really? Yeah, his dad's loaded. Oh, yes, I did know this. And that explains a lot. <laughs> yes. so you, guys, you guys know that after David Lee Roth left Van Halen, he uh, trained as an EMT, and just out, just because he wanted to do it, he became an uh, an ambulance driver, and was a, a fully licensed and trained medic and EMT. So, could you imagine being in LA? <laughs> it's 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 now the Sammy Hagar era of Van Halen. You get in a car crash. The guy pulling you out of your car is fucking David Lee Roth. <laughs> oh my God. He worked that as a legitimate job. Like he's that crazy. He's he's amazing. I love it. Wow. Wow. And Tommy Lee, that's what we expect out of you, dude. Yeah. No, that's why I started, you know, working on cars and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Diversify. I, I thought he was gonna say that's why I started Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's why I saved Van Halen. Oh, right, right. That's right. That's my oh, yeah. Yeah, no, there ain't shit now. All right, let's 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 do a little check in. How's inking Kevin Olin going for you guys? Good. I dig it. What are uh, handles are so tight? I know this they is are. Like, yeah, this is almost like tracing, basically, because it. Uh, I mean, I I pencil this tightly for myself as well, so. I, I I can't. I mean, yes. I, I I guess I I always wondered if I should be, and then I'd see Kevin Olin pencils and be like, yeah, yeah, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah, this is it's all here, man. It's amazing. Yeah, you I know, Kevin Nolan's family starved their 
you know, today. <laughs> so just letting you know <laughs> that that's what it took for him to do his pencils that tight. Was pencils that tight, he had to sell his daughter. Oh, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> There's the first oh, Tommy of the day. <laughs> <laughs> for food, for food, nothing like gross or anything. Right, right. Just for right, I understand. I understand. Just, just to eat. Yeah. Um, I'll say, like working out, like I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into the face. I'm warming up around it. But one thing, uh, I yesterday I got home, and there was a little package waiting for me by my door, and I opened it up, and it was five new baby Raphael brushes. Which I had ordered months ago, but I guess because of COVID, everything was on back order and didn't know they had shipped yet. And so that was a pleasant surprise. So I'm excited I get to break in a brush right now. And I, I knew the big black areas, like the big sculptural shadowed areas would be fun and, and fairly easy. What I didn't know, what I always look at Kevin Nolan to get a better understanding of is where he does the like light grays, those fine hatch lines. And I know he uses a nib for them and they're very hard, like like metal drawn lines. And I wanted to try to pull it out with a brush. So uh, that's where I am getting these fine little feather marks and playing with that. And I'm enjoying that more than I thought I would be. I thought I'd be stumbling a bit more. There's Kevin, I think he uses a nib for all of that, his stuff, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. for, he uses a brush for some things, okay. uh, but yeah, all the like, all the the like rendering marks, yeah, those are those are primarily nib, from what I understand. Cool. How 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 was he inking Mignola like on Alien Salvation? Do you think that was that was pen or nib? Oh, I have an original from that. You oh, do? Shit. Yeah. You really? Do you have it? Can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> I I probably have it. I moved all my flat files into the studio, so it's probably upstairs. Oh, but dude. I have that, and I have a I have um some pages of a Superman alien thing you did over Dan Jurgens. Yeah, oh, I have that book. And it's, have, it looks like I it's have, all uh, nib. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the rendering, but I know he's using a brush for those big sculptural black areas too. But uh, I have a page from that. Um, uh, I guess it was, uh, was it Legends of the Dark Knight? The Superman Robin story? Oh, and, I missed that um, one. Uh, what's his name? Penciled it. He was more of an indie guy who penciled it. And uh, Jim Yeah, <laughs> I don't think DC loved the pencils, but they I don't know if they asked Kevin to redraw, but he kind of redrew like most of it. Like, I isn't saw some of the what isn't he sort of notorious for that though, for like redrawing faces and stuff when he inks? Uh, yeah, but I mean, he repenciled it, wasn't in ink. Oh, okay, he shit. I'm pretty sure it was DC because I remember seeing like like the splash page of Superman like in Gotham showing up and um, like the pencils were very kind of all red looking um, but but not nearly as dynamic as all red. Was it all red? What? Mike all red? Was it all red? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it was like Dave I forget the name. Cockman. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Be rough. stop it anyways it, it, it's a really pretty book and and i have a page from that nice and you yeah. said it's robin robin yeah and i'm pretty sure it was a legends of the dark knight book okay um or it might be like tales from the dcu but it was superman and robin like batman was out of town Robin's keeping an eye on Gotham, and Superman's like, I think you need some help. That awesome. sort of thing. Did Tommy just leave? No, I'm here. Oh, I sound like a door closed. Like, I've had enough of this shit. 
<laughs> Tommy Lee Roth doesn't deal with this shit. <laughs> I'm going into the art vault to find uh find the page? No, but I can. I can. Uh yeah, I have I feel like oh and I also have a Faffer and the Grey Mouser page in Ooh, yeah. Nice. That's some good shit. Somebody yeah. is rich. Yeah. <laughs> he is Tommy really Lee Ross. No, see, I would get all this shit back in the day before, you know. I thought you were going to say, my friend Mike Mignola gave it to me. I do have um, one he did for me. Yeah, um, I saw that piece. Everyone has to have Mike draw their own character for them. <laughs> That's a real Tommy Lee Roth story right there. That's awesome. <laughs> I got a I got a little Mignola drawing watching us drawing right now. So, what do you have, Troy? I did an art swap with Mike. Um, um, what'd you know, get? Let's see, can you see it there? Oh yeah, yeah, that's yes. awesome. I think you mentioned that before, Troy. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Have you seen how much money he has raised for that um, for that food? I, yeah. I I saw like a month ago. Where's it at now? Oh my god, it's like over a quarter of a million dollars. Wow, Jesus, what an amazing! Right. Yeah, I mean, he basically is like, I got time, I got money. I'm gonna draw a bunch of shit and just raise some money. That's it's awesome. amazing. It's incredible. It is, it is really amazing. And he just did that watercolor of that um, that really cool skull astronaut guy. Yes, yes. Um, yes. And the last time I checked, I don't know if the if it's if it's over yet or not, but uh, it was at like thirteen and a half thousand dollars. I saw like the day it launched, and it was at like seven grand. I was like, good god! Yeah. You know that brings us back to what we were saying earlier about how these these commissions take so long. But if you're getting Magnola money for commissions. <laughs> Dude, you're set. <laughs> you could take a month and be fine. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. Is uh, where do you, where does he post this stuff mostly? Well, he posts them on his Instagram, but then he just sells them on eBay. Yeah, I see it on his Facebook a lot too. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not on the the Facebooks anymore. But um, yeah, it's pretty uh pretty incredible. <clears throat> it's so well deserved like his shit's so awesome he's been oh, like, yeah so long that it, it, uh, you won't hear me contesting or arguing anything about <laughs> his stuff you know oh hell no oh no this is so legitimately good it's, it's fantastic yeah we all grew up watching him develop and like create some of the most amazing shit yeah well for me he's he's one of my you know he's one of one of the the big ones for me yeah, I would say I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that's probably true for all of us, you know? Oh, yeah. Tommy? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for definitely. When I was starting out, it's like when I was in high school is when he did that like uh, Savage Land book that Walter wrote. Right, right. Yeah. And, and like a lot of that kind of stuff that I was like, you know, as a kid, you know, wanting to draw comics and starting, like I had, like I was into Howard and Walter and and then I like his, Mike's stuff and then when I was actually having to like then uh, try and draw comics like especially because where I went to school was more like um, tonal figure drawing you know painting it wasn't so much high contrast black and white illustration you're talking about your college stuff yeah yeah oh, yeah and so when I had to draw comics I was kind of struggling, you know, as you do trying to figure out, oh my God, how do I, what do I, what do I, you know, and then also at, at like most, you know, 21 year olds are sitting there trying to figure out what's my style and all that crap. Right. right. Yeah. I looked at Mignola stuff so, so much all the time. It's so seductive that I had to put away every Mignola thing I ever owned for like three years. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> I just I was like, I couldn't look at it anymore. Because I was starting to, like, 
I would see things that I was like picking up surface level things, rendering things. Yeah. Um, that to me were were less about drawing and more about not for Mike, but for me, it was more like I think picking up on uh, little problem solving things that have become more of a style for Mike and were less true for me. I think. Yeah, that that happened to me with Kevin Nolan actually. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's when you when you really like you know somebody's work and and especially you know you're not you're not them and yeah I think you have to eventually find you we all are influenced by stuff and I think about you know like I mentioned Howard and Walter and there's stuff still to this day that you know I wouldn't do a certain way if it wasn't for those guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I wonder what do you guys think of this. If we were to all ink Howard on one of these and have him join in just on a talking level. Oh God. I don't even I don't know if I could do that. Would that be the most amazing <laughs> podcast or would we be Oh no. He's gonna make us all cry by the end. <laughs> yeah. I love him, but that might be too intimidating. That might be... What? No, it wouldn't be intimidating. No, Dude, Howard's a, he's a sweetheart, man. I've no, he's awesome. Never, never cool. met him. We're cool, but I just the amount of uh, a lot of energy. I mean, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it would probably be really fun too. Do you think like, that's? Do you think that's something he would do? Yeah. Yeah, I think he would. I think you give Howard a chance to speak. He's going to take it. <laughs> I mean, he was on my my like podcast already. Not the not not this version of it, but when it was just audio. And oh, okay. One of my favorites I've recorded, for sure. Yeah. See, this is what happens when I because you know I don't do shows, so I don't get to actually meet a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, really all time greats and stuff like that. So yeah. Well, I, with Howard, I, I feel very lucky because he has, he is a friend. Like he knows my kids, my kids know him. It's pretty cool. I thought this was going to be a lot quicker than, than this is going. Taking a minute there to, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of detail in this. There's a lot of, it's a lot of information a lot going on in these drawings. I know. That's why I was like, no way on the Hulk. Uh, I think, uh, I think this one will get done. I just finished like one hand and it, it, I think the hands alone will, e will be the same as the entire body in terms of time. And then the head, which is going to be the biggest time suck. But I'm really looking forward to getting in there. There's a, there's a person that, Howard, speak, oh shit. Speak, that's, that's another nice thing. I just did Command Z. I totally fixed that shit. <laughs> nice. Digital. Um, so, yeah, Howard, there's a, there's a person in comics and publishing that I won't say who they are, but, but, um, uh, but Howard, Howard gave, gave their, what I call them, I got from Howard. And it's called Time Succubus. Mm. It's called and what? Time Succubus. <laughs> what is that? You know, you just, somebody who sucks all the time away. You know? Oh, a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Someone that you're like, oh, shit, here they come. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, like, I don't have the energy or the time to get into this conversation right now. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that's always rough yeah my favorite was watching tommy drive howard insane with his tom ross act on the con floor oh yeah that was amazing yeah he hated that <laughs> yeah, that was so funny <laughs> he doesn't have time for, for your shenanigans tommy you think about like what Howard uh, when going back to what you're talking about, like 
creators doing these certain things. And I was one of those guys that always kind of wanted to be where he would go back and forth between indie stuff, like, you know, American flag and black kiss and, you know, as indie as you can get with that. Right. And, right. and then he would do, um, you know, like the shadow and black Hawk and that stuff for DC. Yeah. And, and, and DC let, let him do his thing with that stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah. when he did the shadow, it was like, he literally moved it to 1985 or whatever. You know? Yeah. It's, and uh, all of a sudden it was like, oh, that was so, that was like my favorite, man. I love that stuff. And the Black Hawk, all that stuff is. Yeah, I like his this. take on it. Yeah, and then the books he wrote, speaking of Mignola, Iron Wolf was awesome. Yes. Yeah. I really wanted an Iron Wolf page would be my holy grail. Was that Craig Russell linking him on that one? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's awesome. That's good stuff. Was that is that like late eighties that that came out? Yeah, it was yeah. like before Dracula and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was like Mike's stuff was getting more and more graphic, but still very like representational, you know, yeah. or re referenced and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And plus, with Craig Russell Inc. in him, I think it finessed a lot of that stuff, too. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing I, I wanted to talk about, with especially now that Tommy's on air, is living this way and having a family is fucking hard, man. <laughs> How have you done it all these years, Tommy? Oh, geez, I don't want to get into that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is hard. It's, it's, uh, well, luckily now, I mean, before you know it, you know, my kids are a little bit older than yours, only by, you know, a couple of years. So, so I have a lot more experience than you. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but yeah, I kind of feel like, but well, before you know it, it's like, um, right now I'm kind of like, I think we're going to be at this point where, you know, I mean, yeah, we have, we're going to have kids in college and all these certain things that have to worry about financially. But for the most part, um, I think I've been feeling kind of like a lot of the work is done now. Oh, I don't feel that, but yeah. I look yeah. To that. I think in a couple of years, you'll start to feel more like that. And start to maybe, uh, you know, I think part of it is now I'm kind of in that empty nester thing right now a little bit. Which yeah. Is, See, which Zoe is, started college, but she's at home doing it online. Yeah. Where, you know, Henry's got his his penthouse, you know. Yeah, Henry's baller. <laughs> you can definitely. You can Making deals. He's, buy, he's buying like Lear jets and shit. He's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jim, did you already finish the Hulk? Yes, I did. Oh my god! <laughs> let, me, let me see. How did you do that? Jim's Jim's running laps around us. <laughs> oh, Jim, let me see. It. Let me see it. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> god damn! I look up and he's got Vampirella on his table. I'm like, what just happened? Well, there we go. Cool, man. So far, so good. Damn, Jim. That's Just wild. To, see, uh, to see the um, you do something draw on on that that has all that like double lighting and all that stuff you know those like core shadows and the fingers yeah and yeah the vampirilla is going to be interesting because it's it's like this is the opposite way that I draw women because I don't use sh shading. Yeah. At all. And he's got like shading on her face and stuff like that. Shit's difficult to pull off. Yeah, and it is. You yeah, you gotta be careful with that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. You guys might witness a disaster. <laughs> oh, 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 Jim. Oh. 
Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that why people tune in really? Just like, I want to see these guys just crash and burn. <laughs> yeah, watch the train wreck. Jim, I think that's the, the most I've seen the, the penciler come through in your inks. Oh, you think so? Yeah. What do you guys think? Well, that's awesome. On that Hulk, at least. I oh, mean, I was, I was bad. I was concentrated on an area and I missed it. So you have to show me later. Before I take off, but um, yeah, I was I was curious if it was if it was because it was penciled so tight, Jim, or just like utter love and respect. I think it's a little of both. It's, we know uh, it's not respect. <laughs> Kevin Nolan knows that I love him. He's he's a good man. He is. See, I've never talked to him in person. I'm, I just. Like, I don't know, maybe, I didn't want to bother him. I saw him a couple times, and now I've had communications with him over social media where I'm like, why haven't I talked to him again? Yeah. yeah. So next time I'm going to be sure if we ever uh, have conventions again. Right, right, uh, right. He came up to me at Heroes Con and started talking with me and was saying how much he liked my work. And, like, I was sitting next to Panosian, and as he's saying this, I'm like, he has no idea who I am. He thinks I'm Dan. And, no. And then he said something. I was like, Kevin, I think you're uh, mistaking me for Dan. He's like, no, you're Sean, right? I was like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you calling me old and senile? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd never met him. I, and I, I, I was just, I don't know. It was humble me like Kevin Nolan doesn't know who I am. He definitely doesn't know the work I do. Yeah, you forget that comics is such a small industry. And I, Sean, I'm kind of like you where like, I, I assume like the older guys that like, they just don't know my work. Right. But certain people still, you know, pay attention to what's going on. And uh, when I, I met Mike Zek in uh, Colorado Springs, small convention there, not a, not a great show, but I was looking through his work. He looked up and noticed my badge and he was like, oh, hey, Jim, I love your work. And I was shocked that he knew who I was. It's, it's Mike Zek. He's like an 80s legend. Right. So that, and John Beatty was sitting right next to him, who's one of my favorite anchors. And Didn't Zek design The Punisher? Uh, I mean, I know he did the first miniseries about The Punisher, but did he design him? No, that was... Uh, yeah that was who whoever drew that stuff when he first showed up in superman i, I, I think i think ramita i think ramita senior does, does oh i didn't know he went back that far because his first appearance is in amazing Spider yeah okay. um but man i love that zach beady stuff from the 80s oh yeah that's good uh, stuff. Both of them were sitting next to each other at a sh at this show, and they were both like super cool guys that I guess still paid attention to what was going on because they they both knew my work and uh, were really cool. Yeah, yeah, BD's very cool. Uh, I find that my son and Henry sends me. Um, he'll always send me like a link to a Instagram post or something like that. And I'm always finding new artists that way. Um, there's so much great stuff that I think it's it's kind of in a way become like a new way for people to find artists. A more not new, but a more probably more common way than going to the comic shop or the newsstand. Like right, we, right, for sure, yeah. So Henry's always sending me this stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, like there's just amazing art out there, and. Yeah, the internet is yeah. great for that, for sure. Are yeah. you do you are you guys sort of finding that artists are finding their groove much much younger than when we started? Yes. It seems it seems that way to me. Yes. Well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with it, but yeah, like I just I just I see these young artists and I was like, oh my well, god. Well, think, like, think about how much more they're exposed to than well, we. Well, that's that's a huge part of it for sure. Yeah. Uh, did you guys see, uh, someone posted, um, I don't know how old it was. It was a Mike Zek Batman drawing this past week. 
No. Oh my God. It, it stopped me in my tracks. It was so graphic. It was just like Batman standing over Gotham City. It was really high contrast. Um, I think Chris Aaron, the uh, the Newsarama writer, who just got promoted this week, he posted it. I, I don't even remember why. I was just saying this is awesome. It That's was awesome. That's gorgeous. Great. Definitely look it up because it's gorgeous. Is it a new piece or is it an old piece? I don't know. I felt like it must be new because I've never seen it. Hmm. You remember that story he did in Legends of the Dark Knight? No. Yeah, he did it and he inked it himself and it's awesome. Oh, uh, shit. I have a story. I have a page from that. Oh wow! I think every I, every every story Tommy Tommy tells is that he can just follow up with, and I own an original. Page. Right, he's Tommy <laughs> Lee Roth. He is Tommy Lee Roth. No, if it, um, I think I have two pages. I do. I have two pages from that. I'll show you when you come next weekend. All right, cool, awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm coming out too, Tommy. I'll see you in like a week. Dude, awesome, man! That would be great. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. They they won't let us cross borders or anything. Actually, I I guess I can technically fly to the states. It's very cheap to fly to the states right now. But will they let you back in? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Even even driving, you have to sneak. You like pushing your car across the river. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, what part of Canada do you live in? I'm in Alberta. In the west. The west, okay. okay. Yeah. We're sort of above Montana. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. How far it, it, from the border are you, uh, Troy? Um, uh, what is it, about a three-hour drive to, to the Montana border? Something like that. It's not that far. It's, there, it's, it's a funny stat. There's, it's... Um, um, a huge percentage of the Canadian population lives within like a couple hundred miles of the U S border. And, um, I think a lot of that is just weather, <laughs> weather related sure. for the, the further North, North you go, the colder it's going to get in the winter time. Well, that's why I don't, we used to go to Canada all the time when I was a kid living in Michigan, you know, we oh, yeah. used to go all the time and, and, uh, but yeah, there's a reason I don't live up there anymore. I just, it's too cold. I just don't like the snow. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss snow storms, but I don't, not like I don't want to live through them, but. I miss yeah. power outages. Oh, when, when a snowstorm hits and like everyone's forced to just stop life and you go yeah. outside and there's that like, silence that you've never heard before because the snow like absorbs all the sound wow. there's such a calm out there I, that that is an amazing thing to to have right the only thing i hate about snow is shoveling it otherwise i'm, I'm right, fine right yeah yeah i have people for that <laughs> <laughs> right right of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> how many roth don't shovel no snow oh hey uh um Jim, how are the skies up there where you are right now? Oh, oh yeah, I wasn't here for that. Yeah, Jim. Uh, well, the guys, yeah, dude, it, it's been really crazy here. I mean, uh, you can't see, you know, 50 feet in front of you kind of deal. It, it, it just kind of has gone from bad to worse. So it's supposed to ease up starting tomorrow and Tuesday. We might be getting rain, but... Uh, on Friday, man, I had people out here texting me like, yo, you might want to pack a bag just in case we all need to evacuate and get the fuck out of here. Because I'm on the southeast side and the fires were not necessarily getting close, but close enough that it, it was something to be conscious of, you know. Right. So um, I... I I went for a drive yesterday. Uh, I went out to Vancouver, Washington, which is only like a 15 minute drive. And dude, the air out here, it's like you can't even see buildings that are like 100 feet away from you. Oh, 
Uh, it's 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 been pretty gnarly. So, um, I don't know where it all goes from here, but it's just like a waiting game. I check the air quality like a couple times a day, and th every morning for the last three days, I've checked it, and it's like at on in the red at hazardous. Like, do not go outside. Level. So. <laughs> Jim, when you're inside, can you smell it? I can smell a slight burning when I wake up in the morning and I come into like my living room. Are you like waking up with like your whole like nasal cavity just raw and shit? Not really, but just being outside, like I was telling you, Sean, for a total of two minutes maybe yesterday with wearing two masks. Yeah. I felt like a wheeziness last night when I was on my couch watching a movie. Yeah. Um, and so today I'm like, well, I'm I'm not even stepping outside today. I, I'll just stay in and work all day. But I'm I'm ignorant, man. I feel like an idiot because I didn't know that Oregon had fires necessarily. So they followed you from LA, dude. They didn't have I know living in LA, you get you know, <laughs> and then the level that it reached out here this week is just, um, I don't know if anyone out here has seen anything on this level. So. Yeah, I was going to say, no. that's not like a normal thing, right? I mean, no. this is. No. People so, that have lived here are, are like, yeah, we have no idea what's going I mean, on. It's just, it's just. The it's story. just part of uh, it's just part of 2020 you guys right right right, right. And what's this is the other thing for you to deal with like have fun you know right what's next remember last time we did this so we had an earthquake in north carolina oh yes. fuck yes yes um and this was all started because of a gender reveal party is that no true? No, that was that was that, that was just. There's so many fires going on right now, but that was one of them. That 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 has started a huge swath. That's, that's a California one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. 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 That's the one down near LA. Yeah. Okay. But that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know, man. Hey, Tommy, remember when you were out here and we jumped the uh, over the train to uh -huh. get to. To get to food, yeah. <laughs> those train tracks yesterday, man. I'm driving. I'm stopped at those tra train tracks at, at a red light, and in this hazardous, toxic air, there's like a young teenage couple. They're like 17 years old, and this, they're not wearing masks, and the guy is like posing on the train track, like signal, and this girl is like shooting professional photos of him with a camera. <laughs> Because the background, it looks like you're in a smoke machine. Right. So these teenage kids, and he's like wearing wow. sunglasses and it has like an outfit on. So oh these kids are having a photo shoot <laughs> out in the toxic smoke. <laughs> I'm, I'm like in my car. It's my first time outside in like two days. And I thought I was hallucinating. I thought I was just tripping. I'm like, is this real? Remember being that young and stupid, Jim? Well, he needed, he, needed a, he needed a photo for his SoundCloud. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking about, um, uh, yeah, like, like, you know, these kids are probably like, oh, yeah, this is how the world is now, you know? So, right, yeah. right, right. This is normal. Shit, man. Wow. Yeah, that, that completely took me out of my element of uh again that's like a very la thing like there's a photo shoot going on right right is, is the city is burning okay i guess i guess that's happening now who knows these are the times man these are the times it was good to get out though i mean we were all kind of like going stir crazy out here so i am really looking forward to getting out there yeah man i hope we can actually be like outside and it isn't a, a whole thing. whatever it is uh, i'll just be excited to like be able to hang and socialize even if we're just stuck in your house yeah yeah <laughs> we can order pizza <laughs> <laughs> Order pizza and watch movies. It's just like high school again. Definitely.
Yeah. <laughs> you know, where I live, the they don't deliver the pizza, so I have to go get it. What? Yeah, I remember that. I went with Melissa once to pick up the pizzas. I could not believe how far it was just to get a pizza. 15 it, minutes, dude. It's not that. What? Was, it, was it stone cold when you got back? <laughs> it's 15 minutes. It's not that bad. No, oh, okay. I mean, for pizza, it's just it's a lot longer than I would have thought. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's because you're from Atlanta and they have they have delivery there. <laughs> you got crazy shit happening in Atlanta. <laughs> are people masking up where you guys are? Are they, are they? I'd say where I am, it's about half and half. Yeah. For me, it depends on what town I'm in. Um, Trump's been here twice recently, so everybody's all excited about not wearing their masks and being being stupid. Ugh. So, but yeah, he there's um so there's been a couple rallies and I'm like, hey, what are you, you know, yeah. And what sucks is that I'm like, I gotta go to the grocery store with these guys. Yep. You know, so uh. it's really freaking. But, but that sucks. But yeah, there's been like a few weird. Um, uh, it depends, like like Chapel Hill where UNC is. Yeah. Like uh, all the kids are getting sick because they're partying and being dumb college kids. Yeah. <laughs> photo shoots on a train track. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then and then the. Um, uh, but yeah, the the. Uh, but also in Chapel Hill, you have more like a more of like a more liberal crowd where there, there's more like mask wearing, you know, going on and stuff. But, mm -hmm. but where I live, it's like a, a real mix. So it just depends where I am. Like all the way into town yesterday to go to the garage, I was following a, a truck with a, you know, Trump sign and, and, you know, it's just a very, it's a very like conservative, uh, area <laughs> yeah tom ross don't play that oh. <laughs> I, I do like our new character though tommy lee roth yeah he's the best i'm a fan well tom tom ross is like the art alter ego tommy lee roth is is like the rock rock and roll alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> like the, uh, <laughs> it's going to require a whole a different wardrobe uh, change. I'm telling you, man, you're going to have to yeah. get well, I feel like stuff, spandex stuff, leather items, studded items, <laughs> uh, scarves, bandanas. I mean, this is a whole this is a whole thing, Tommy. This is. <laughs> when you come to Portland, man, we can go to several different thrift stores and, and find some of these key items you're going to need. And oh. hook it up. <laughs> there's a character in this book with he, that uh, that I'm working on right now, where there's like a kind of a, an aging celebrity kind of guy, and I was just looking at reference this morning of um, uh, who's the who's the uh, not the lead singer of Aerosmith, but the guitar player guy. Uh, it's the, uh, it's Joe Perry. Joe Perry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this guy is perfect. You know, I mean, like, he wears these scarves and shirts are unbuttoned up down to his, you know, belly. And right, stuff. right. Like, so, yeah, like, that's basically, he's my inspiration for this character. That's awesome. <laughs> Tommy, we didn't talk about this, but do you want to? Uh, should we do a Bob Ross segment during our shoot next week? I don't know. I'm kind of. I don't know if I can find Bob Ross right now. Okay. But maybe. <laughs> I'm not saying we have to. I just yeah. just throwing that out there. Yeah. If there's enough, if there's enough whiskey involved, you might be able to find him. <laughs> I mean, you know, if even if it's just like a, a two-minute segment where we hear 
Tom Ross's thoughts on Tommy Lee Edwards as an artist? Yeah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I don't think Tom Ross knows who Tommy Lee Edwards is. Well, okay, so then a 30 second segment of Tom Ross being like, who? <laughs> what? There you go. <laughs> Jim, are you using the brush a lot more today? Or are you? I am. I like this Vampirilla one. Is like, oh, this is this can just be mostly brush with some of these uh, shadow tones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this is. It's cool though. I'm I'm into it. It's like out of my wheelhouse, you know. That's what's really fun about these is is you know sort of tackling stuff that. You you normally never would, you know. Right. Yes. Yes. I mean, there's so much sh structure like to this piece. Like, Kevin clearly knows what the hell he's doing when he picks up a pencil. For sure. Yeah, I find I'm I'm learning a lot a lot every time we do one of these. Uh, I am leaving with something new. Nolan is way more of a like illustration approach than cartooning or comic approach. Right, right. Like this is uh, this is like this this Vampirella can al this is almost like a finished like figure drawing or figure study in a way. It is. I remember seeing that one when I was looking through them. It's like, well, that just looks finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Oh, someone, someone has to take their pill. Ignore that alarm. That's my watch in the background. <laughs> is it one of those calculator watches, Jim? It is. I, I bought, I bought three of them out of vending machine in Japan last November. Wait, are they're, they're, they're like the classic '80s, like Casio. Oh my God! I was totally kidding. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> no, I, I freaked out because I, I said, "Oh, you can." You can just buy these in a vending machine out of here. That's awesome. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> Why not? You know? <coughs> I had a re another dream last night. That didn't, it didn't have Madonna in it, though, this time. But, <laughs> uh, you know, like, uh, like Tiffany instead or Debbie Gibson? <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, oh my God, I forgot all about her. <laughs> wow. The blandest, most boring. Like, how did she become a pop star? I don't even know that I ever really knew a song she sang. She did, uh, I think we're alone now. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I almost I almost busted out and started singing it, and then I was like, "What am I doing?" <laughs> yeah, that's there it is. <laughs> well, yeah, this one is. Um, I have a recurring dream where um, I'm I'm uh, really excited to see a movie, and then I finally get in the theater, and and it's like a piece of crap theater, and and the the screen is just a is just like a fifty inch plasma mounted to the wall. <laughs> I've been to a theater such, like that. Yeah. Such a Tommy dream. <laughs> yeah. Nightmares from movies. <laughs> we could talk about we could talk about movies. Did you guys watch the uh the Batman trailer and the Dune trailer? I have not uh, seen uh, it. I just finished reading Dune um like a week ago. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like the Dune snob at the moment. No. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I'm kind of like, I think I, you know, I'm like, I'm already like, oh, that's not the way that that should be. You know? <laughs> well, it's what's interesting because I'm a huge uh, fan of the director. Um, I think he's amazing. What um, is he done, Troy? Well, Blade Runner 2049, Arrival. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, oh. That's the guy doing Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he knows his shit. That's not the guy did Annihilation, is it? Uh, no. Okay. And uh, um, 
but it, it was interesting because uh, I was actually talking to Kari about it, and he said, "Oh, it just looks like a remake of the original movie," and it and it kind of does. Like it, it's the Lynch movie. Yeah, the Lynch, were thought, I think the Lynch movie had more interesting design. Yeah, but it, it, yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you know, the proof is in the pudding when you see the movie. But um, yeah, like he's, I was sort of surprised that they didn't really deviate and try some different things. But I think a lot of that is because um, there is a book that that you know Frank Herbert, you know, kind of oversaw called the the Dune, the Illustrated Dune. Oh, okay. And and that that book was I don't know enough about it to, to talk um to 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 you know be you know to be uh completely like an expert or anything. So but there's but the that book um is you know like from like the seventies. And so a lot of the stuff in that book is has become the inspiration for every incarnation we've seen of Dune. Ah, so some of that's going to be Lynch, some of it's going to be the new thing, some of it's going to be the sci-fi channel miniseries, whatever they all, they're all kind of going from the same source material visually as well as the writing yeah because I believe they're doing two movies and then an HBO miniseries, The Daughters of Dune I think that's what I read huh. so nice. I mean that's a huge investment um, on a project that's kind of out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm worried that it's not going to be out there enough. But um. Yeah. But yeah, I because I, I just like I don't know when I see like to me the the Jodorowsky Dune stuff like the designs for all that stuff are so awesome like all the uh the ships and especially the costumes the the Mobius costumes and everything. Yeah. And and then I see the new trailer for the new movie, and everybody's wearing black, and it looks exactly kind of how I'd expect. Yeah, it's for a for a twenty twenty sci fi movie. Right. So the the armor looks like um something from Mass Effect video games. Um, the the I mean it all looks cool, but I'm not like oh my god what an I did see what they could see a little bit of the thopters uh, in the trailer feel like like the book where they, they have actual wings. Oh, okay. Um, like uh, I think they could be interpreted as like a wings from like a bird or maybe even like an insect or something. But from what I could see in the trailer, those look pretty cool. Yeah, I like I want to see like. I like color. You know? Yeah, you know, I, I'm with you. Like, I would love to see, and that's, I mean, I love the fifth element uh, for that reason because it was just so over the top and garish. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it would, it would be nice to see some of that kind of brought back into other things. It's just this everything is earth tones approach it's just yeah we've we've seen it you know like you said yeah. we've seen I really it i saw a um you know like when i when i read the book i think of like the atreides like they have the the, the eagle uh or the the hawk symbol that's the Atreides symbol and i picture it like in my mind in the book and this is where the problem comes from the book people. You're always like, well, I picture it this way, but you know, <laughs> but it's sort of like, you know, I, I, I picture it kind of like, I picture Dune is like a Miyazaki movie. Yeah. Like people would have like a big red crest on their chest of their uniform, you know, or I don't know. And, and uh, you have uh, stuff that would be, you know, different colors, you know, for different factions, different colored flags, you know, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, the new one, the new one looks, um, the photography looks beautiful. Well, of course, yeah. What about the Batman trailer? Did you watch the Batman trailer? I've seen none of these, but I mean, honestly, I just like, I have no interest in another Batman movie. Yeah, it's 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 funny because I I hadn't and then I saw that and I mean I I really like Matt Reeves, 
Um, I don't know if you saw his his Planet of the Apes uh, movies. He did the yeah. last two. Yeah. And the, the last one is amazing. Yeah, it's supposed to be... I haven't seen it. It's supposed to be really... Oh, right. it's, it's so, so... I mean, you know that you're watching CG, but you're just... It's, it's yeah. so... You're just so immersed in the story and the characters. It's, it's you talking about the Apes movie. Yeah. Which one? Which one was the last one? Oh, I can never remember. Is it Dawn or is it? I can I never remember War. the names. Of, yeah, War, War. I saw yeah. some of War. Yeah, yeah, it looked good. And, well, uh, I mean, I'm look. I, it's. I'm not saying it's bad. I just. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. It's another Batman movie. Like, uh, uh, how many times are we going to do this? I saw the trailer and I thought it looked fine. I wasn't like excited or, but I wasn't like bummed or anything. I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I guess that's how I feel about it. Just indifferent. I like the, uh, um, what I saw, the Batmobile. Yeah. What's the Batmobile like now? Is it, is it, uh, is it still a tank or? No, it's like a muscle car with a big ass like airplane engine in the back. Oh shit, that's dope. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's supposed to be like year two, I think, is, is the approach they're taking. Oh, okay. okay. I just hope we don't have to see his parents get shot and the pearls falling. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Well, what Matt Reeves suggested is that it isn't an origin movie. Um, so hopefully that holds true because God, yeah, I mean, this is, God. That's what I was afraid it would be. Yeah. I saw um, just by chance two movies recently. Um, I watched Queen and Slim. Oh, how's that? It was okay. Um, it wasn't what I thought it would be. It had some real like visually it was very interesting to, to look at i mean it was a music video director so i get that um i think there was some real plot holes in the story um but the performances were really good and the the heart of the story i loved um i i, I don't know if I enjoyed the ending, I, I, won't, I won't give anything away, but I, I don't know. It wasn't bad. It was, it was good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was good. I, I kind of, I feel like there was an opportunity for it to be great, and it wasn't, but it was good. Yeah. And then I also watched The, uh, the Old Guard. Oh, with, um... oh, what's his name? Help me out, Sean. Who's in it? Who? It's Charlize Theron. Oh, oh, that's, I'm thinking of a different movie. Oh, it was that's a comic. Uh, it was the, a comic. It was. It's a oh, Netflix movie that was a yeah. comic. Yeah, I somehow managed to get through that. I, I made me like curious to read the comic because I thought there were some interesting ideas in there that I, I didn't know what it was about. I had no idea. Me either. And uh, as you start to like. Like it starts off and you think it's just another like, you know, they're an elite team of secret uh, of uh, operatives. And then as the story goes on, like there, there was Tommy, you know what I thought was really cool was when they're going off to their first mission and they very subtly show you that their swords, they all have a sword. Yeah. And then they show that one guy who's got the hood over his head and he's holding his sword and he looks like a crusader from the mid middle middle evil times. Yeah. And and I was like, there's something going on here. That was not just by chance. Yeah. And so I thought that was neat. There was some yeah. neat stuff going on. I thought yeah. the the idea, the concept was cool. It made me want to read the comic. Yeah. I just didn't like the directing or the dialogue or the music. Or yeah, yeah. The dialogue was cool. <laughs> <laughs> As a, the dialogue was was really really bad and, and yeah the directing was nothing special the fight sequences were okay but it was just i was like fuck i i, I kind of read the comic that was a uh rock well, every book? every single thing that happened I, you saw it coming like a mile away yeah oh yeah it was so formulaic and the end was such 
uh, drenched in saccharin. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's I just love that, the reaction from Jim is whoa. Damn, guys, calm down. What is this movie so I don't ever need to watch it? What's it called? No, Jim, I'm not, I don't, I think it's worth watching. It's called Old Guard. Guard. Okay. But it's, it was a comic that Rucka, is it Rucka that wrote that? Yeah. And who, who published it? Who drew it? I'm not sure. I'm not a Rucka guy, so. I, I'm, I'm not either. I just, uh, I was kind of like, oh, there's something interesting here. Yeah, I I, uh, I like I I watch it mostly because um, of Charlize Theron. She's awesome. Yeah, she's great. Apparently, they're they're doing a uh, uh, George Miller's getting ready to do another uh, um, Furiosa movie, but it's a uh, it takes place when she's younger, so Charlize oh, won't be shit. won't be in it. Yeah, is that happening? Well, she she made a statement a little while ago because um, someone asked her if she was upset, and she wasn't. But um, you know, um, so I hope I hope it's happening. Yeah, I actually would love to see a, uh, another Mad Max movie, like with Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I I mean I, I love Fury Road. It's amazing. Oh my god, yeah. It just makes me want to see more from that world and, and more of Max. I, and I think that I, and I liked, I liked uh, Tom Hardy's version of Max. I thought yes, cool. yes. Yeah. That movie rocks so hard. <laughs> it's yeah. a, no, it really does. It's, uh, do, you, do you ever go to the movie theater and, and I mean, with that one, there, there was a lot of hype to it because everyone would say how amazing it is. But you go to a movie, you're watching a movie and you just have that reaction of like, this movie was made just for me. Yeah. <laughs> right. I st I I want to watch that like black and white chrome edition that like it looks yeah yeah gorgeous. Oh shit, that sounds awesome! I'll tell you how to do it. You have TV settings. Yeah. <laughs> Set that shit on black and white. You're good to go, man. <laughs> yeah. You don't need it to be supervised by George Miller. <laughs> but it was shot in black and white, right? No, no, no. He just—they just did a treatment to it after after the fact. You sure about that? Yeah. yeah. I like how Tommy's like, no, <laughs> idiot. What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm so offended by you saying that, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> did anyone watch Raised by Wolves yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. All right, don't don't tell me anything because I'm gonna watch it. Oh, yeah, so do you want? My, I won't. I won't get. Oh, I don't know. You can tell I me. Give, I won't give anything away. So, I mean, you just have to accept what one of the storylines is, and it's fine. So Ridley Scott directed the first two episodes. How many are there total? Five so far. There's, it's so it's ten. It's ten. I believe it's ten in total, but. So they've had five. We've watched him, and the first two are really good, and then it just kind of incrementally gets more and more kind of boring as it goes along. Oh, is is my opinion of it. So, is that uh, HBO? Yeah. Okay. Now, I, watched show, watch... I watched a show that I really loved the premise, and I loved the didn't love, but I liked most of the first season. And it's called. Um, Counterpart. Well, I don't know that one. Uh, yeah. J.K. Simmons, um, you know, J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. yeah. He's he's the star and he's a uh, he's the lead guy and he's he plays a a person who works at a um, like a very secretive kind of government shadowy ops sort of place, but he's he's kind of like a cog in the wheel, doesn't really know exactly what they do. And the more you find out, the more you realize that there's actually another, there's another, there's a mirror universe, basically. Uh -huh. And so there's I a lot of- I know talking about now. Yeah. And, it, and it's like, and it's like, 
so it's a little bit like dark, which I think is awesome and, and way better than this one. But but it's like, uh, but what's cool is that some of the ideas are like, it's like the, there's a Cold War going on with, you know, negotiations and diplomacy and stuff with another universe. Oh, wow. So That's that, pretty cool. That is really that was really intriguing and and sometimes they take advantage of it sometimes they they don't you know but wow the we're, we're, doesn't doesn't really deliver what I had wanted but that's just me where where'd you watch it um it was on Amazon Prime oh, okay uh, it was originally a Stars series okay and they they didn't do a third season it could go either way i'm glad it stopped because it was going it was getting worse and worse but james cromwell is in it they, it's mostly all shot in germany and berlin oh, so cool. which is a cool thing because like just the symbolism of it being in berlin with the wall right and, and you know you being able to like cross to the other side um, and it's like another, there's another universe that is us on the other side, but is it the same? What's different about it? Is there another wow. you? What, what choices does that, that other you make that's different now? That And so, the, so it opens up a whole world of like spies. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, it's like the, the premise is so kick-ass. Uh, there's one actress in it who's, who's amazing. Olivia Brown, maybe she's the woman in Rushmore that he falls in love with. Oh yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, that that uh, yeah, his teacher, that that um, she's amazing. Hmm. I always find that with the high con, and this and like once again, this is just me. Um, with those high concept shows, that it's really difficult for them not to end up poaching it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they just become so Im imprisoned by their own conceit, and and it just it just doesn't pan out in the end. I I have found anyways, sort of watching those shows, and I know that a lot of people really are enjoying um, Lovecraft County. Is that what it's called? I was going to ask you about that next. Yeah, and and I, it's and I'm just like, oh, that is just like prime for one of those shows to just not be able to stick the landing yeah because <laughs> yeah because like yeah. it's such high concept so but um and i'm not saying it's bad because i don't know if, if you know maybe it'll be amazing but um right. yeah it's just i always don't like getting invested in shows like that because it really sucks you in and then just like lets you down <laughs> i thought dark did it did it well though so i, I wouldn't be scared of watching that one that's the german one yeah, um, we started it. My my partner oh, yeah, watched sure. it, watched it all. She watched it all, but I started watching the second season. Then I'm like, I don't remember who any of these people are. <laughs> did you while. guys see? Uh, speaking of that actor, Tommy just mentioned. Uh, did you guys watch that movie, uh, Palm Springs? No. I love that movie. I, I, Steph and I just watched it on a whim. It's a it's a comedy. It's so quirky and surreal. It's kind of like a Groundhog Day where you wake up and every day is the same. Oh yeah, J.K. Simmons is in it, right? Yeah, that's what I just said. The act, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you see it, Tommy? No, I I have a I have a, my own. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, it's a thing I have with Andy Samberg. Yes, he's yes, we're doing a show together and it didn't work. I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah, I get a that. weird like personal thing I gotta get over. I get it. I get it. But he was hilarious. The movie was hilarious. Yeah, he's really good. And it's really like there's points in the movie where it's so strange and bizarre in a great way. I'm like, how did this get made? But it's awesome. I heard it was really good. It is really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Is that on Hulu? Yeah, it's on Hulu. Okay, I just got Hulu today. And by, oh, shit. And by just got it, I mean a friend of mine finally gave me her. Oh, the login? 
That's hilarious. Shout out to hey, yeah. shout out to Carmen, my homegirl Carmen. Uh, Jim, watch it today. Just get real baked and watch it. You're gonna love it. Okay. The reason she gave me Hulu was uh, my buddy Keith Knight. His new show Woke is is on Hulu now. Oh, that's your buddy's show. And I know I've known Keith for like 20 years. I don't know if you guys know him, but he he's been doing that uh, comic strip the K Chronicles for like 25 years or something. No, yeah, Shauna posted about that. That's awesome. Yeah, and he's great, dude. I I, I you know I've been seeing him at conventions for two decades now he's been working on the show for many years i think and uh i just watched the first episode this morning and it's it's really great i mean it's it's his story it's an actor playing keith knight as a yeah i know about a cartoonist yeah who i won't spoil it but it, it's it's gonna it's gonna turn into what keith knight's like story is as a cartoonist so it's, he came to north carolina comic-con yeah, yeah. He's a he's a good dude, man. He's been hustling for years. Yeah, that's like, great. Good for him. So uh I was impressed. Like the first episode was was cool. I'm gonna keep going with it. Awesome. And I'm a guy who doesn't really like a lot of new shit. So that that <laughs> Yeah. Tommy's a whole nother story. <laughs> I like everything. <laughs> By everything, you mean nothing, right? Exactly, exactly. I'm trying to think. I do. I do. I try. And, I'll think of something I like in just a minute. It's I uh, we got ding, ding, ding. most of the uh, most of the Studio Ghibli movies landed on Netflix Canada, so I've been oh. watching and rewatching those over. And you know, oh, yeah, awesome. that. That, does that count? I like those. Yeah, they, that goes without saying, Tommy. It's interesting. The one, the one movie that didn't that didn't make the cut was uh, Graveyard of the Fireflies. Oh, and I don't know if you've watched that one or not. I haven't but, seen that one. Oh my god! Super don't, depressing. don't! It'll just absolutely crush you. <laughs> oh, I don't need that. Oh no! I I was watching this, and you know, because you get a sense of of. Your 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 notion and an idea of animation based on North American animation, and you're watching this movie, and you're like, "No, nah, they're not going to go there with this. They're not going to go there with this." Oh God, they went there with this. <laughs> really? So it takes place after um, the dropping of the bombs in Japan. So, and it follows a brother and a sister, young brother and a sister. And that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Better watch. Yeah, yeah, and you're just like, oh god. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah, I watched it once. I mean, I, I I had seen it, and then the kids wanted to watch it, and I was like, let's. let's wait a little <laughs> while. And then finally we did, and 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 Henry was like, I can see why we didn't like this. Isn't the one we watched a lot, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's what? it's it's, really it's it, yeah. Oh, it is. It's just it's just yeah. I don't want people to think I, I think it's a terrible movie it's 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 just so so emotional like it's yeah. just yeah you have to be like in the right headspace to i don't know if you can <laughs> i don't know what that headspace would be <laughs> I've, I've been kind of avoiding like super modern dark like serious heavy shit just because of the tone of uh yeah, it's right not, now. So yeah. It's like that, that's why I think that movie uh Palm Springs like really was so refreshing to watch. Oh all right I finally thought of something guys. <laughs> yeah. Bill and Ted space and music. Oh geez. oh yeah. It's is great. It is it? Yeah. Dig it? Wow. wow. What's great about it, Tommy? Um exactly exactly what we were just talking about like you want to watch something that's like about family that's uplifting great for everybody um but without being but has is completely earnest has heart um nothing cynical in the whole thing yeah um it was it's such a breath of fresh air for me i was like all right all right fair i mean 
Henry and Scarlett came home last weekend and we all watched it together as a family. And that probably influenced my enjoyment of it a, a bit, I'm sure. Sure, sure. That's okay. But, but well, oh, where man, did you great, watch it? Huh? Like what network is it on? It's uh you can watch it on demand on you know where anywhere pretty much. Okay. okay. We bought it on Amazon. It was okay. Okay. You can you can rent it for twenty bucks, mm -hmm. or you can buy it for twenty five. So I bought it. Okay. Um, I loved it. It was great. It was it's funny. Um, also like, Scarlett and I rewatched the old ones just to kind of yeah. get, get ready. Which you don't need to do, but it was kind of. <laughs> yeah, a, I would treat. guess not. <laughs> yeah, it was an extra treat, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, guys being, because in the new movie they're dads. Oh, oh I, didn't that. I didn't know and, that. And their kids are like the age they were in the original. Okay. And they're they're girls. Oh, okay. And it's just charming as hell, man. I thought it was great. I just loved it. Well, and I mean, I, I'm a huge Keanu Reeves fan too. Like, and he apparently, like, I've heard enough enough stories about him in his real life to yeah. to feel comfortable in saying that he's a, an awesome human being. Yeah, he seems like it. Yeah, so it's just, uh, yeah, I, I saw the, I watched the trailer for that, and I, and um, I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere for me at some point on one of the things here. But yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, I was excited for it, you know, just, just being a fan of the other movies, but then, especially the first one, and then, um, and then kind of, initially kind of bummed that they weren't able to bring it out at the theater, um, because of everything that's going on, but then yeah. I'm like, but, you know, I mean, I would have preferred to see it at the theater, but it's not like, I mean, to be fair, it's not like we're, we're, you know, it's not Dune. You know, yeah, it's not a big, huge, yeah, scope, so and yeah. yeah, so it, it, but it has the time travel stuff in it, nice. and, it has, it, and it's very, it's very music centric, it's very yeah. like about them. Because the whole premise of the first one is they somehow write the song that unites the world, you know, yeah, imagine being a, a you know, in your late 40s now and you still haven't done it. Right, and you think you you think you're about to, and and you still haven't done it, and everybody's like, "Dude, when are you gonna do that shit, man?" <laughs> and well, guys, I uh, sorry, I, t I didn't mean to cut you off, Tommy. I gotta bounce. Um, okay. I'm almost Show done. Show us where you are. Show us where you are. Yeah, um, I'm almost done. I'll get it done uh, this afternoon. So that's where I'm at so far. Oh, terrible light shining there. That's where I am so far. Awesome. 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 All right. Yeah. It's just been fun. Send me the uh, scan when you're done and uh, good luck today. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, Troy. Bye. 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 All right. Finally, let's get serious. <laughs> Canada. Fuck Canada, yo. <laughs> All right. So this, this is where I am, guys. I'm getting uh, into the meat of this. Oh, wow. Oh, that dry brush is working green on that stuff. Oh, thanks, man. That's yeah. awesome, man. I gotta focus that a little better. I think is that better? Hold it a little yeah. bit. But yeah, yeah, it's coming along. That's that's awesome. Thank y'all. Yeah, I was actually really wanting to 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 do this one. Um, so maybe we, maybe we'll revisit. Kevin Nolan someday. Yeah, I would love to do that. I also thought of a new one. What about Rick Leonardi? Oh, shit, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. That would be fucking awesome. There's a lot of his pencils out there, too. What about Mike Zek? That would be yeah. awesome, too. Yes. Can we get... right, there's, two. there's two right there. All right, can we get their pen... Are there Mike Zek pencils floating around out there? We could ask uh, John Beatty. Oh, that's true. He, yeah, and John's a big fan of the podcast, so that would probably be cool. Nice. Well, here we go. Yeah, Sean, I might have to bounce soon as well. I just have uh, some character design stuff to get to today. All right, so let's let's uh, let's wrap it up.
and we can all finish these on our time and, and we'll get them in uh, on the on the show. I'll have Alan put them in at the end of the video. Yeah. Final results. So just send them to me when they're done. Yeah, um, and I've been getting a lot done on my page that I can't show you. Well, I'm glad. I know how stressful it is to uh, <laughs> have something weighing on you like that. But just give me a minute, Jim, and, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll yeah. bad boy up. I'm just in the middle of something that seems to be working. I, I think I'm just basically trying to be Kevin Nolan right now. Like the successes of this are like, yeah, I've seen Kevin Nolan think his stuff before. <laughs> yeah, but I but I'm already seeing stuff though in the way that you're handling what he would do as little cross hatching lines. Yeah. That you're doing as um dry brush and stuff. Oh okay, cool, cool, awesome. All right. Okay. Well thank you fellas. Oh yeah. Jim, good luck with the design stuff. Let me let me uh, just press stop and then we'll say goodbye. Okay. So everyone okay. watching and listening, thank you. Uh okay. we'll have final scans on the end here. So this is the Ink Pulp Podcast. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Comics. Hip hop. Life. 